that uh, the impression is being created as if uh, Kashmiris are fighting against India. It is some terrorism there, some militancy, violence and all that. And I will put it unleashed by, supported by, promoted by Pakistan. That is yes. how the government of India is uh, posing this question. Whatever is happening today in Kashmir is because of cross-border terrorism. Now what are the facts? What's the reality? You have to go through the pages of history. I was in a meeting yesterday in Chennai itself. I talked about during the partition when our country got partitioned, Pakistan as a nation got, uh, was created. There was a lot of bloodshed in Punjab, United Punjab, in Lahore, in Amritsar, elsewhere in Bengal, so much of uh, blood and devastation took place and so many families in thousands got displaced from either side. All together, Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs and uh, in our state Jammu and Kashmir it was partly Jammu was influenced. There was there were communal clashes and there was violence and there was bloodshed as well. But it was only Kashmir Valley which is in turmoil for the last so many decades about which so much of propaganda is going on in the rest of the country which remained absolutely peaceful. You can go through the pages of it, history when there was a lot of bloodshed around, not a single communal incident took place. Not a single. That is why, you see, Mahatma Gandhi, the Bapu, the great leader of those days, even now, of India, he made a comment that if at all India is burning and because of this division, lot of hate campaigns are going on from both the sides and uh, virtually virtually the monster of violence has taken over this is what gandhi ji said and all others senior leaders and he said about kashmir that here is a place a small place called kashmir where it's from a ray of hope is emerging a ray of hope of living together. Virtually uh, that element of togetherness, if at all anywhere it is settled surviving that is, that is that part of the subcontinent called Kashmir. This is what Gandhiji said. And I was just reminding yesterday the audience that it is what Bapu said and what he said that I wanted to envision the future of the rest of India through the prism of Kashmir. And what was that prism? Brotherhood. The prism was tolerance. The prism was accepting each other. The prism was that sense of togetherness. So I posed a question yesterday. Then what went wrong now, since then? Another to... question, another question, another question which I must tell you, which you must uh, understand. The younger generation, I appeal to you, through you the whole uh, fraternity of uh, younger uh, generation leaders, they must understand, because they have to build the future for India, for themselves. It was a unique situation. Kashmir, a Muslim majority area, bordering with Pakistan, seeing the larger frame of the partition and the situation then prevailing, it should have been part of Pakistan. But it did not. Not because there was any other, anybody forced them. There was no Indian military at that point of time. Because they 
wanted to be part of secular India. They appeal on the basis of religion, two-nation theory, as Mr. Jinnah propounded, that Muslims are a separate nation. Kashmiri said, no, we can't have nations on the basis of religion. We have common ground of our history, common ground of our cultural ethos, common ground for our larger foundations which can guarantee a, a good life for all of us. That's how they decided. So my question is, to the whole country, to the whole, uh, the particularly the younger generation, please, please search out, please find out the answer to this question. What went wrong? Despite being a Muslim majority area, they opted for India with certain promises. And those promises were given a constitutional shape. There was certain constitutional frame provided by the Constituent Assembly itself. That's how Article 370 emerged. And now what we find today, after so much of time, what's now left about Article 370, which is not a part of uh, any other constitution, which is a part of Indian constitution. So what, why it was first incorporated and then eroded? 43 amendments took place and virtually it has been, it, is, it, has, it has virtually been uh, weakened so much that there is nothing now left for some sort of a greater powers to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. And another aspect is that, you know, you must understand, we have a Republican constitution which is not unitary, which is federal in nature. That means we have, we have center, we have, it's, it's a question of the unity of different states. And there has been a demand, consistent demand, persistent demand, with all the states, that states must be given more powers. That means what? Democratize the whole system. Yeah, giving more powers to the states does not mean making India weak. Which is India? India is we together. We, the people of India, make India. It is Tamil Nadu, it is uh, Maharashtra, it is Bengal, it is Punjab, it is Andhra, it, are some, it is Kashmir, which make uh, together the Indian Union. Once I met in Srinagar, he told me that I have visited LOC. I have not seen any kind of a war there and all that. But once I reached home in the evening, I switched on some TV channel. I found myself in a war zone. I <laughs> so this is what, uh, you see, unfortunately, if you open up the channels and all, some channels, I'm not talking of every channel, they, are, they seem to be at war, accusing, abusing, condemning and all that. So, media as such, there are good sections in the media, yes, I appreciate their role, but there are certainly bad tendencies as well, which need to be countered. Oh. Even Tamil Nadu was demanding. Never forget, even now, the sentiment is for more powers here. More powers means what? You want to be partners in, in the process of making India. You want to be equal partners. You don't want to be subjugated, somebody is master and you are like slaves. Not at all. You are as important as, as the rest in making the nation, in framing the nation, in building the nation. And as far as Kashmir is concerned, I told you, when partition, Mountbatten plan was there, partition. So Kashmir's position was being a Muslim majority area, number one, and then being at the uh, border with Pakistan, they had a position, they had a situation to join with whom? With Pakistan. They were not forced to be part of India, they joined India willingly, 
of course with certain certain assurances with certain constitutional guarantees and that is good that's not bad you see you are treating your own people suppose uh, now in andhra pradesh they are demanding special status what is bad for that if they demand special status we are having certain tribal areas in andhra and elsewhere who are who are getting certain certain special treatments that's not bad that's good so in fact we want more powers to the states uh, not to weaken the states but to making them strong enough to shape their future and kashmiris have been given that that guarantee not by one person by group of people but the constituent assembly itself and that's why it has been said time and again not me quite in the recent past the son of maharaja hari singh the then maharaja who signed the signed the instrument of accession with union maharaja karan singh his son sat on the floor of the house in 2016 that while as the other states merged with indian union you are well read people you must understand what he said on the floor of the house that my father acceded to india acceded to india if he did not merge jammu and kashmir with india while as other states merged my father acceded to acceded means what giving certain rights what are those rights that you can have there is sovereignty as far as defense is concerned communication is concerned and foreign affairs the sovereignty lies with union of india the jammu and kashmir state surrendered these powers to the union and while as while as union assured the people of jammu and kashmir in the rest you can shape yourself you can make yourself you can determine your uh, future you are the masters of your choice nothing bad defense is with the union foreign affairs and the communication three vital subjects what went wrong now because of the poisonous politics of hate which is being introduced in jammu and kashmir to divide the ranks of the people that is what it is it has been done what is that's what we are experiencing now it's not, it's i have i have said it that there was a time when pakistan sent the raiders there was no army at that point of time it was kashmiri muslim and kashmiri pandit small size small number they protected each other now kashmiri pandits have been forced to leave out of fear no doubt i left my home out of fear many others but kashmiri pandits as a community which is most unfortunate most disturbing that is the soul of kashmir the plurality of kashmiri is uh, kashmiri culture has been assaulted and it has become victim of this divisive politics do you think uh, general kashmiri muslims or kashmiri pandits are happy about this situation not at all they settle remember each other but they have not determined the course of politics they have not shaped the politics which has been imposed on them so on the one hand there is hindu communalism a brand of communalism which claims to be patriotic nationalistic but with a poisonous politics and on the other uh, islamic uh, muslim fundamentalism is taking to advantage of this unfortunate situation and they are complementing each other hindu communalist by propagating hate by dividing the people by taking up non issues 
by branding all others as anti-nationals, by victimizing the minorities, the Dalits, the weaker sections, they are creating a situation which is much favorable for, for minority fundamentalism as well. You must understand it. And that's what is worrying for us. It's bad for Kashmir, it's bad for Jammu. I am not. As far as I am concerned and CPIM is concerned, we have been fighting here. We are fighting against every shade of, shade of communal politics, be it Hindu-oriented or Muslim-oriented. It is poison. And that's why I appeal to you. I have an earnest appeal to the younger generation of my country, my people in Tamil Nadu, that uh, politics and religion should not get mixed up. When politics becomes, religion becomes a tool for political ends, it becomes poison. It divides you. What is required for development, for a good, good future for all of us, that demands unity within the ranks of the people. And this politics of uh, uh, politics based on religion, whether of any variety, it does not suit the interests of the common people. That's why it should be rejected. You tell me it's a question of anger. Who was issue? Eight-year child getting kidnapped, then gang raped, then brutally murdered. Whose issue it is? I pose a question to everybody across the globe, across the country. You know, one, one unfortunate incident took place in Delhi in 2002. The whole community of people forced the government to act. Good enough. Don't you even own this poor child who doesn't know what she is and to whom she belongs to? Will you remain indifferent? If you remain indifferent with this child today, what will you do if the bad things happen with other children in the rest of the country which are happening? So it's not the question of my child, child or your child. A criminal act happening to some innocent. The conscience must I think, I think it should, it should shake us as a community of people. What happened in Lahore, even those days, Zana, one girl, student, again, and then the whole society took up, came on the streets and forced the government to take action to start an investigation. Tell me, I appeal to you, I question this. Should we be indifferent about the such, such heinous crimes? Should we not ask for justice? Should we not ask that such criminals should meet the... Uh, they, should be, they should be taken into task by the authorities? Now, unfortunately, some people are coming not... Uh, Arguing on, the, on behalf of the victim, they are argue, arguing on behalf of uh, those who are allegedly being uh, just, they are as rapists, as criminals. Now what is BJP doing? I, I wonder. BJP as a party uh, claiming to be more responsible, a pal party of difference. What are they doing? What happened in UP? What is happening in Kashm uh, Jammu? Now, uh, ministers of that area, the MLAs of that area, the responsible people belonging to BJP of that area, they, are not even vis they have not even visited uh, the house of the parents of that unfortunate girl. What kind of India you are going to build? You, have, you must ask this question to those who are in authority.
and if my brother and Kashmiri points, they must, they might be having other issues which we, which we, their grief, their sorrow. Yes, I share that, but nevertheless, I expect them to be more responsible. And sufferings, I must only suggest, sufferings should not divide us. Sufferings should rather unite us. A person in Tamil suffering becomes victim of criminal acts, a Kashmiri should speak, a Punjabi should speak, a Bengali, a Maharathi should speak, all of us should speak. Rather, people across the globe should speak against the crime. It, you see, it's not the question of uh, how the CPM is going to stop it. But certainly, we can't be just uh, silent spectators. Not at all. We will raise our voice. Whether we succeed today or tomorrow, we will not give up. And certainly, we feel that there are larger sections of the silent majority, people. They have to be there. They have to be led, they have to be mobilized. And I hope uh, the response I got from the rest of the country, not me, this incident, though late, though late, we still feel, I still feel uh, that there are uh, strong feelings across the country, cutting across the political lines. We are seeing uh, comments coming in the press, the media and all that, even those who have been hawkish on other areas and other, uh, at other levels on other issues, they have been uh, quite, quite aggressively, strongly raising voice in support of the victim of Kotwa rape and murder case. I am grateful, I congratulate. That gives us hope. It's not the question of CPIM. It's the question of every peace-loving street and every, every uh, person who has uh, concern for the future of our of our society, who has the concern of uh, justice system must prevail. Justice must be given to every every person. So it's a question. It's a common ground for all of us. Maybe somebody is not uh, some uh, CPM as a whole is in the front row certainly, but there are many others, many many people in different. Uh, political uh, groupings, political formations, civil society, artists, writers, intellectuals. Good number. My country is rich. It's not so poor. Not at all. As far as uh, our, our, as far as uh, CPIM is concerned, we have detailed out our approach in uh, 2010. Uh, Central Committee met and discussed the direction. We first stop repression. Treat the people of Kashmir as human beings, treat uh, them as, uh, as part of uh, uh, the country, give them that much of uh, uh, support and uh, uh, help which is, which is legitimate. And take care of the commitments made in the Constituent Assembly, in the Parliament, time and again. This issue has to be sorted out has to be settled. It's not the question of territory. It's the question of people's future. Kashmiri need to be on a message of togetherness has to be sent to the people of Kashmir. And bullets cannot do that. Pellets cannot do that. Stop it. Talk to them. And we the neighbors here, Pakistan and India, I said yesterday, when North and South Korea could talk which was not expected a few days before, why can't we talk? We are two neighbors. We have to sort out the issues. For the good of our country, for the good of that country, for the good of Jammu and Kashmir, which remains on crossfire. And for that to happen, a strong voice, stronger voices are required in the rest of the country, and the younger generation can play that role, I am sure. In every sense, it is paradise on earth, but 
it is bleeding now. Please do something so that this bloodshed comes to an end. It becomes another destination, one more destination, not for only for our country people, for younger generation, for the rest of the world as well. And it has that capacity. Don't allow it to die. Thank you.